Hi, I'm John Wesley Shipp. Catch me talking about The Flash right here today on DC Daily. Hello, everyone, and welcome to DC Daily. I'm Clark Wolf here with my trusty sidekick, Hector Navarro. Hi. And oh, wait a second, is that John Wesley Ship? What? How are you? Hi. Hi. It's good to be with you. I'm very well. I'm doing good. How are you guys? Oh, we're so Great. good. This is awesome. John Wesley Ship is on the show. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, so for today, we were going to revisit The Flash's 1990 pilot. Uh, are you up for it? Sure. Absolutely. Wonderful. Lucky us. Okay, so let's jump in. What was it like for everybody seeing this again 30 years later? You know, there are some episodes I think I still haven't seen because every <laughs> now and then something will come on and I'll go, I don't remember doing that at all. I don't know if it was because of the length of hours, the our schedule in those days, we didn't have CGI, so we were all night long doing live action, practical effects on the back lot at Warner Brothers. And I never expected that one season of a show that I did 30 years ago would have resonance throughout my 41 year career, you know, but it's been that way. Yeah. I love rewatching the 1990 Flash uh, because here's a fun little fact about me it's one of my earliest memories of being alive. Uh, one of my earliest memories, I was three, three years old when the show was coming out. Uh, that's me dating myself. And I remember being that young and I remember my dad being really excited about wanting to watch The Flash, right? And I remember us gathering around the TV every Thursday night watching that show. So when I would revisit it years and years later, it, it brings me back to that time in my life and it's so cool and it's so nostalgic and it's so great. And the, well, the beauty of it is the show holds up and it is a great show, but I do have that connection to it, which I think is great, yeah. You know, it's amazing when I do conventions, whether it's Ecuador or Peru or in the States or Paris or London, invariably someone will come up to me and they're very emotional, really. It's amazing, they're very open-hearted and they'll tell me how they watched the original show with their dad and yeah. now they're watching the new show with their mm -hmm. kids, and I'm kind of the thread that runs through that. I, they get emotional. I get emotional. You know, I'll tell you, it's nothing I ever expected. I have to know. Can you tell us what it was like back in 1990 to put that suit on for the first time? Oh, Lord. Well, it was quite a construction. Of course, Oscar winner Bob Short, both the new suit for the CW show and our show were done by Oscar winners. So, you know, we can't complain. I think the design was wonderful. It was a process though. First of all, they brought me into a room to build the suit. And the first thing they did was they greased me down <laughs> with Vaseline and then they wrapped me in cellophane. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? And then they put a uh, 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 like a spandex suit over that. And then they began, because they had gotten a mold of my body and they had done individually sculpted muscle pieces. And they began to glue those onto the spandex suit. And then I realized why they had greased me and why they had wrapped me in cellophane. Because as that glue set, it got hot, you know. And so we went through all of that. And, uh, and they did the cow like old school with the plaster of Paris. You know, I had two tubes up my nose so I could breathe and it got darker and darker and heavier and heavier and heavier and then I hear arr, arr, arr. I'm like oh my god if they split they're gonna crack my skull open because then they had to break that off now there are much easier methods you know I'm happy to report that in 24 years there have been you know <laughs> some improvements Wow, what a that's that's quite the that's quite a lot to endure. How familiar were you with the Flash character going into this? Had you ever read the comics before? No, they mentioned the Flash, and I said, "Uh, you mean Flash Gordon?" <laughs> and mm -hmm. they were like, "No, the Flash." Of course, I act highly insulted now. If anyone asks me that, I'm like, <laughs> "No, it's a DC character. It's the Flash. Get a clue." Yeah. Um, <laughs> But no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know anything. In fact, I was reticent. I was 
there was a part of me, because I had delusions of being a serious actor, having started my career in New York, I thought comic books have been sort of spoofed up to that period, right? In a wonderful way. I, as a kid, never missed an episode of, ba of the old Batman series, but that's that wasn't where my interests lie. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to April Webster, multiple Emmy Award winning casting director, Lost, and she was casting the original Flash, what they call the OG Flash. Mm -hmm. And um, she said, just read it. Just read Danny Bilson and Paul DeMeo's extraordinary treatment. And I read it and I realized that these were human characters in human situation. And there was enough, uh, the suit would only figure in a quarter of the episode. My job was to make Barry relatable so that when I went in the suit, the audience came with me. And what I love too is that if you were a fan of the comic books and you knew about the different flashes, Barry Allen and Jay Garrick, the show didn't do that comic book thing of alternate universes right off the bat, but they used Jay yeah. And made him your older brother and made it about that relationship and that was that's beautiful. right yeah and we had a we had a central city we had a garrick street that's right and there there were all these little uh uh easter eggs and that's what comes from having executive producers both on the original show and the cw show who are not producing mass content for mass consumption they're big fans of this pop cultural art form and they're writing a show they want to see and if we want to see it too, all the better. My favorite moment from that pilot, from that great, almost feature length special episode is at the end of the episode where your character's talking to, again, your brother, oh. Jay's character's son. And it's really, yeah. and it's so interesting that, that, that those themes of that father-son relationship, that uncle-nephew relationship, you can even see those in the Grant Gustin flash. You can see those yes. in the, the CW shows. Do you have a favorite moment from that first episode, John? From the pilot, well, like you say, it was like a feature film. It took us six weeks to film that on the back lot and at various uh, parts of Los Angeles where they had, uh-oh, we have an interloper. Uh, various oh, parts is that... of, oh. this, is, oh. uh, this is Joan and Jay Garrick's uh, French Bulldog, oh. comic, <laughs> comic appropriate. How you She's doing, sweetie? She's so cute. She's so sweet. Oh. But anyway, it was like working, uh, it, was, it was like doing a film, you know? And there were so many different parts of it. Of course, the comedic part, I love the boxing moment where we're watching, you see Iris and Barry in bed and she says, oh, I can't believe it was over so quickly. <laughs> and of course, we don't know, they're scanning down our bodies and then they show that we're watching a boxing match. And I say, yeah, over in three rounds, who knew? So I appreciated that the humor was not whoopee cushion humor, what I call slip on a banana peel. It was based on the characters and the problems and the different, that they might actually face. Of course, that scene at the end, you know, uh, with Sean, of course, is a highlight. Yeah. You know, I may not yeah. have been able to run as fast as your dad, but if you ever need me, I'll be there in a flash, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like with me and Grant, playing Henry and Barry, people often ask me, how did you guys work up that emotion? And I always say, the problem was never working up the emotion. The, pro the challenge always was not to let the emotion run away with you, mm -hmm. you know? How did, okay, so I have to do it. Now my monster, uh -oh. <laughs> he heard cuteness. All right. He heard cuteness yes. and was jealous and immediately came as soon as your dog got to go on screen. Okay, he gets Absolutely. his treat, he's gonna go away. Now we're, okay. we're expecting your roommates at any moment. Have I know, yeah, right? I gotta call him in here. Guys! Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about uh, the 90s flash. How did you all simulate the speed? We did an entire evening at, at, from dark until dawn trying out various techniques mm. of how to under crank the camera and how I would move so that when they sped the camera up and they added the wind effects, it looked, well, if I was running normal, uh, you'd see the blur going across your screen like this. So that was kind of like, you know, kind of funny. So they said, we'll try a Groucho Mark scoot. <laughs> so there's video <laughs> somewhere of me going all over the back lot in a half crouch doing the Groucho <laughs> Mark. <laughs> you know, and uh, finally they just said, you know, just, 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 uh, just run as smooth as you can, you know. So I heard that you kept a few things from the Flash. Can we see a little show and tell? 
Yeah, you know what I, uh, first of all, I have to tell you, after we shot that last shot as the sun was coming up and we had to get it in and they yelled cut, me and Mark Hamill, Southeast LA, I ripped off the wings and flew them in the air. <laughs> Mark Hamill has those wings. He has them. <laughs> and I couldn't think of anybody I'd rather, I'd rather have him because he taught me a lot. I was very self-conscious about being in a superhero suit. You know, I didn't want to talk in the suit. I didn't, certainly didn't want to be, I didn't want to be a mascot. Well, here comes Mark as the trickster working that unitard, no holes barred. <laughs> and I was like, well, if Mark Hamill can give himself to that extent, to that character, I need to get over my bad self. But back to your <laughs> question. Uh, this is Barry Allen's original raincoat that yes. I wore outside the police station. Wow. Uh, scraping up footprints. Of mm -hmm. course, Emmett Walsh is like, my mom would say, be careful. Priscilla pointing out, what's he going to do? Stub his toe on a footprint? <laughs> <laughs> I, t I tell Grant, I, get, I gave him a lot easier time as Henry Allen than Emmett gave me. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but, for uh, sure. I also wore this in the Tricksters episode of the CW Flash. Love where it. I was abducted from the prison. I was saved from the box of knives. Grant reveals himself to me for the first time. We're on our way back to Iron Heights and we stop by Star Labs. And I said, I still have the coat that I wore as wow. Barry. He said, wear it, wear it. Yeah, that's great. Because they love, love all those kinds of uh, things. The really cool thing, John, is that when I was a kid, the, your show didn't get an awesome action figure. But years and years later, <laughs> we finally got this amazing beauty right here. And I was told you've got some other uh, awesome collectibles that you might maybe want to show off. Did you say action figure? I did. <laughs> the one you have. Hey! The 1990 Flash. This is Flash 90 from the wow. new show. Wow. Here we have, we just happen to have within arm's reach. Totally spontaneous, you <laughs> yeah. understand? Yeah. We have Jake, Eric, and one of the coolest things is I'm a pop. <laughs> You're a Funko Pop. That's so That's cool. That's the dream. <laughs> wow. It's so It's so wild, you know. Uh, I think the one you have is the first one that came out. And I remember with the first uh, fan, when the yeah. audience <laughs> member first handed me one to sign, it was like, God, it took me all this time, but I'm an action figure. <laughs> um, I also have some things that are very special to me. Of course, if it weren't for our great artists and inkers and storytellers, none of us would be here. And this is one of my prized possessions. Joe Stanton at uh, Terrificon. Wow, and Mitch Halleck's Terrificon drew this for me while we were sitting there. Wow. So uh, that, that amazing. I'm very fond of. Also, Brett Breeding, uh, famous wow. inker. Gorgeous. He, uh, he inked that for me. And here's wow. another signed uh, thing from, from Joe. That's great. So Eat is it. this an action figure? No. <laughs> oh, no. That's, that's just one of your... M no, multiple no Emmys big deal. here. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, well, you were you. It may have taken that long to get an action figure, but you were in a comic book. Am I correct? Yeah. Can we show oh, that off? Hey, yeah, this you're is right. Great. I when I went to visit the DC library before they moved from New York and the whole operation moved to LA. Yeah. The librarian told me that this was only the second live action cover that DC Comics wow. ever did. The first one being the great Chris Reeve. And this wow. has, people complain there's no commentary on the DVD. Well, this has all the commentary that is missing uh, yeah. from the DVD. Conversations with me, with Danny, with Mark Hamill, with the special effects. There's yeah. Mark and all his glory. Wow. And it's there are also stories, yeah. Comics. And uh, I was just looking at one. There was, I can't find it right now, but there was one that was a dead ringer for, oh yes, yeah, so there's our, there's our Amanda Pays. Yeah. Oh, there <laughs> she is. Tina McGee. So <laughs> it's great. really, uh, of all the things I think that we did or were able to do, uh, I think this is my favorite right here. I, I have to track one of those babies down, John. I'm going to go to eBay immediately after this. And I'm going to try to find them because that is a collector's <laughs> item. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm very grateful to have it. I'm very honored actually so to have cool. it. You know, Carla Princey, who was publicity at Warner Brothers in 1990, we were on the back lot and we had shot a scene and she said to me, you know, John, 
you were born, this is the role you were born to play. And me <laughs> being a young, sarcastic actor, I, I snapped, oh God, I hope not. You know, because I <laughs> had this entire, well, I think I owe Carla Prinzi an apology having been Barry Allen, Professor Zoom, Henry Allen, Jay Garrick, and then Flash 90 again. It's been a rich and rewarding experience. Well, speaking of, of, of you reprising the role specifically of the Flash from Earth 90, of that Flash, you have played him in a few different CW Arrowverse appearances, and your Flash bravely and beautifully sacrificed himself to save everybody. What was it like to shoot that scene? It was so emotional and so great. I love the way Sterling Gates uh, and the writers wrote that episode. It wasn't sentimental. Mm. It could have gotten maudlin, right? Mm -hmm. But my character was, look, I have a job to do. My earth is destroyed. My wife is gone. You're young. You've got your entire superhero life ahead. This is my sacrifice let me make it mm -hmm. and my one of my favorite moments was going over to black lightning to be able to sort of welcome him yeah. into into our world that wonderful moment with caress i told him how much that meant to me that they oh. wrote that that yeah. in you know and then to simply say to him and keeping it light Keep riding the lightning, son, through and away. Yeah. And uh, I know you'll continue to make us all proud. And off I go. I thought that was it until I went to looping. And they said, we have a surprise for you. Uh -huh. And well, I, we don't want to tell you what it is. And so I go in and I'm running and I'm running. And, and then suddenly I hear my voice saying, well, I have faith in you, Tina. And then it flashes on my face from 30 years ago. And then it goes to her saying, well, the truth is I have faith in you too, Barry. And then it dissolves back into me running because what that gave me was I knew what I was running away from and I knew what I was running toward. Yeah. And I love that we ended my 30 year arc on faith such a wonderful wonderful moment and and series yeah. of events like you said and you know just to touch a little bit on you know within the arrowverse having played barry's dad and jay garrick can you talk about the shift from being the young you know hero to now being this incredible role of the mentor yeah it feels fantastic number one I absolutely love Grant Gustin. I love the way he works. There's no acting, it's honest. He knows I was the Flash. I knew what some of his hopes and dreams were, or I had an idea going forward. And I was very clear that my job was twofold, to bring my audience onto the new show. From right. the techno. And then the other one was to serve as a mirror, to hold up to Grant, to show him all of the wonderful things that I saw in him that made me know he would be the perfect flash for today. But I have to tell you, I spent that entire first season, you know, everything, the action adventure, the music, the score, the lights, everything settles. We walk into the phone booth and we pick up those phones and it's just me and Grant looking at each other and telling the truth because that's how I really feel about you. He said, I know that, John, and I feel that. He said, and so that's why it was so important for me to be able to see you when I was when I was doing my close-ups. Yeah. I, I have definitely teared up a couple of times listening to you talk. I don't know if it's the quarantine or what, Clark, but my emotions so are crazy. on edge. I am about to start Clark, I am trying so hard not to tear up talking to John Wesley Ship <laughs> talking about the flash. But when he talks about Grant, it's like I knew I was gonna love the CW Flash show from that first episode when we get to the scene with you and Grant at the prison. Be and because the, anytime I've seen that episode and the first time I saw that episode in 2014, I was a mess. And so I knew I was going to love, love, love the show. So yeah, hearing you talk about Grant is amazing. John, the 1990 Flash is so important to me personally. It's something I would watch with my dad. I know that it means so much to so many different people. Do you have any messages for fans during this time? You know, it's not going to last forever. So hang in there. Listen to your medical professionals and your scientists. Yeah. And even though it may be 
short-term pain, make it about long-term gain. Amazing. Amazing. Barry Allen, the scientist, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the real life Barry Allen's out there. <laughs> John, this was truly so great. Uh, I think this made our day. Thank you so much for talking to us. It really means a lot. Thank you for having me. Thank you very um, much. And the rest of you out there, be sure to watch the 90s Flash right here on DC Universe and keep watching DC Daily too. We might be binge watching this show through the summer. That's right. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hector, do you have some unboxing to do? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to wipe some of my tears here from that amazing <laughs> interview. What an emotional, beautiful thing. But I've got some brand new Todd McFarlane action figures and I'm gonna go get, I'm gonna go unbox them right now. So I'm gonna do that. And now, through the magic of free shipping, I have brand new McFarlane toys right in this box. And I'm not the only one. Amy and Sam, did you guys also get a box of toys? Yo, so you know I did. Ah! Look at this thing. Oh my God, there's free toys in here. I am <laughs> dying. Well, good to see you both. Now, before we do this, I just have to brag. I just interviewed John Wesley Ship with Clark Wolf, and it felt like talking to a real life superhero. It was so cool. I just wanted to, I need to put that out there. I need to put that out there. Yeah, great. Best. Yeah, yeah. No, we, no, bro, we got toys. Let's come on. Let's open these okay. toys. Come okay. on. I've been sitting on this box all week. I can't take it anymore. I'm all right. dying, bro. I'm Let's dying. Let's do this. Yeah. Okay. Opening we toy do boxes shall commence okay. now. Do it. Yeah, box cutter. All right, let's see. I, oh you know what, this god. is just, I feel like it's a, oh my god, what is it, what is it, what is it? Look at Amy, look at Amy, oh my god. Amy, it looks like she's I in can't. pain. Amy, what's going on? Amy, what are you doing? Oh, no, 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 no. These are so gorgeous, oh my god. Y'all, these are the thing? Wonder Woman 1984 figures. These are from the new movie. I'm going straight to the golden armor. That's what they say, they call right, it here. Wonder armor. Woman, Wonder Woman 1984 golden armor. Golden is what it's armor. called right here. So I'm opening this bad boy up first. There's stuff right there. collector trading cards. Yeah! There's trading collector cards. trading cards. Oh my God, there are. Look at this, the lasso in two different forms for action I... and storage. Look at the sculpt on her head with the curly hair. Yeah. You yeah. know yeah. I'm standing this curly hair. You know I'm standing this. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh my God. Look, even, even even her toes bend, so you can do like a crazy oh my God. Like, action movement. It's flexible, <laughs> the lasso's flexible! Are you kidding me? Look at, are you kidding me right now? Look at wow. this. Oh! Oh, that's so cool. Look, she go. can fly through the air. Yeah. Hey. Not a flying toy. Should probably let everybody know. Uh, doesn't actually fly, but certainly looks like it does. Uh, this was so much fun. Todd McFarlane and DC, Wham. if you guys want to keep Wham. sending us toys, please do. We have no problem with that. Yes, yes, we have Absolutely yes. no problem with that. More keep toys. That. You have As, my address now, that's Todd right. Father. That's right. <laughs> Send me toys. That's right. And for the rest of you out there, if you're looking to get your hands on these figures, good news, they're available now at Target, Walmart, GameStop, and Amazon. And I highly encourage you to use your time at home to film your own miniature version of what you think the Wonder Woman 1984 movie will be like. Mine's gonna have lots of compassion and punching at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Maybe you can make a podcast about it. Your own version of Wonder Woman 1984. Speaking of which, that reminds me, we have a podcast. The DC Daily Weekly Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and SoundCloud. So be sure to check that out. As for us, we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye, y'all.